Let's travel back in time for a second to the mid-1980s. The world experienced an epidemic unlike one we had ever seen. Three letters, H-I-V. It changed the way we viewed our sexual health and social behavior forever. Crazy times, Dom, I remember like it was yesterday. 1984, I was in the Bronx, Lincoln Hospital, a New York City hospital. My first experience encountering an HIV patient. You know, I'd heard a little bit here and there, this, this strange viral illness started in San Francisco. We didn't know, we really didn't know anything about it. But my first encounter, I mean, it scared me out of my wits, but such a scary time. I do. I remember it clearly as well. And I remember growing up as a young adult watching the news and, and hearing about HIV and AIDS and, and seeing it as, as almost like a death sentence. When these people were, were diagnosed, I mean, they didn't have very long. We didn't have anything to, to deal with, with how sick they got. All we could do is try to make them feel a little bit better. But extreme weight loss and literally withering away before our eyes just... Um, just so, so tragic. And, you know, it also changed the whole social scene. STDs were one thing. Up until then, other venereal disease, we had herpes. But when HIV uh, roared its ugly head, I mean, it, it changed the playing field that, that uh, sexual relations were potentially a deadly, a deadly activity. Now, a new scientific achievement is on the horizon. Get this, a vaccine for HIV. This is so great. And joining us now to discuss this exciting clinical trial is epidemiologist and dean of the Rutgers School of Public Health, Dr. Perry Halkidis is in the house. Welcome, Dr. Perry. Hey, good to see you all. Really a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. So let, let's jump right into it. Dr. Perry, I mean, we have come such a long way since the 80s, which we were just talking about with HIV treatments. But explain to us why a vaccine is still so necessary. We have made huge strides in HIV. In 1996, a set of medications became available and people who were getting sick and dying all of a sudden were able to take these medications and live a normal life expectancy. So there are so many treatments out there right now, it's incredible. However, treatments are not enough. But here's the problem. Whenever we think about human behavior, whenever we think about medications, this requires that people actually take pills every single day. For God's sakes, people don't even finish their antibiotics. They don't go to the gym every day. They don't eat well every day. Yet we expect HIV positive people all of a sudden to be taking a medication for the rest of their lives. So a vaccine is really, 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 really an amazing next step. The vaccine that's being tested right now is based on the mRNA technology that was used for COVID-19. Previous vaccine trials for HIV have not worked out so well, but this one seems really, really promising. Amen, a game changer. So I'm wondering, and I'm sure our viewers are too, Dr. Perry, how does a trial for an HIV vaccine actually work? Are they exposing people to the HIV virus? The beauty of the mRNA vaccine is that it, it in fact uses segments of the RNA to be able to create an antibody response in the body, right? So we're not injecting people with HIV. It's not polio. Like early, early days of polio in the 1950s, we put real polio in people and they got the disease. But with an mRNA vaccine, what we're doing is we're using a different technology. And the technology is such that we implement a slight element of the RNA into the body, and we allow the body to actually have an immune response. And this is really a powerful, powerful way to introduce an antibody response, to produce an immunologic response to a disease that does not place the people who are on the in the trial at risk. And that's fantastic news for us. 